How do you add text in Photoshop? Well, lucky you, there's a type tool, and the type tool is the shortcut key T. It's also the letter T in your toolbar. Now there's a few different type tools. The standard one is a horizontal type tool. This does pretty much what you expect, types horizontally. If we click and hold on the type tool, we have a vertical type tool, and we also have a few masking type tools, which we won't use in this tutorial. The vertical type tool, I wanted you to know that you can do vertical text with that tool, but we're just gonna use the horizontal type tool. Now there's two ways to add text to our design. First, you could just click. If we click, it's gonna pull in whatever our default font is. It might be just like a Myriad Pro or something if you're on a Mac. And then it's going to allow us to type in that text. It already has it highlighted, just a couple little first parts of placeholder text, lorem ipsum. But if we wanted to, we could just type in add text here. Now it's bringing in some kind of default that I've had before. If you're in the newest Photoshop, there's a few different ways that you can adjust your type. There's a contextual bar. You see that right here. And it actually gives me font options, size option, and color option. Now to change this text that I've already typed, I'm gonna to need to highlight it. And once I have it highlighted, I could change this to whatever I want, like this inter. I could change this font size, maybe to 36, much bigger. I can also change the font color to black, just like that, hit okay. Now I have a few more options. We can click on this little guy to hide the bar or reset this bar position, or you could drag this around. Maybe you don't want it over the top of your text. We can bring it up here, and we could pin it to right there. And last but not least, this button right here will pull up our properties panel over here, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But another spot that you can look at all of your text options, when you have your type tool selected, and you have your text highlighted, up in the upper control bar here, are a few more options that aren't in the contextual bar. We can change the font right here, but we can also change the weight. So if you wanted a thin version, or if your font has a thin version or a thin font style, we can adjust that or make it bold. We can change the point size right here and even click and drag on this icon to scale it up and down. This guy right here kind of is a little bit of a way to display your text in different ways. So. Imagine the pixels around the edge of your text. Do you want them to be sharp, crisp, strong, smooth, or none? If we click none, you'll notice how jagged some of these get. So if we look in here at the E, very jagged lettering. So this is basically like our anti-aliasing. So it's like helping the edges look a little bit smoother. Now it tends to just be on strong. I almost never uh, touch this option unless I'm working on something that's very, very small. So imagine like a banner ad on a website that's only 160 pixels wide. I need to work with text that's tiny and I need it to be as legible as possible. But when you have larger text or you're working on print stuff, I wouldn't even worry about this too much. Now we can adjust the alignment so we could center the text or align it to the right. It looks like it's aligning it incorrectly to the left, but sometimes this will just move the text and you'll just have to bring it back to the center. The easiest way to do that is to press Command or Control A. That's going to select all. You see the marching ants? And then with the Move tool selected and our layer selected down here, we can come up to the top and click to align center, both vertically and horizontally. So that'll put our text right in the middle of our page. Now we can press Command or Control D to deselect. Those options are up here and select all and deselect. Now I show you that because I do this a lot. When I am selecting or lining up text and I need it to be right in the middle of my page, I'll use that quick sort of Command or Control A and D to then move and align my text. Pressing T for the type tool again, you'll notice that now that we have our text center aligned, Anything we type, types from the center out. So that's pretty nice. That's where the alignment tools come in handy. If you want it to be pinned to the right, align to the right, left or center. We can change our text color up here. We can even add warped text. So if we click on this, 
There's some style options we can choose, like arc, and we can see what's happening to our text out there. We can adjust the bend. So if you're wanting to curve text, you can curve it really easily with this warp text feature. I'm gonna hit cancel on that. Now this icon right here is going to pull up the character and paragraph panels. These are very important panels for text. In here, we have all the different options that we can utilize. Whether you're looking for line spacing between lines or kerning or tracking between letters, we can even do superscripting and subscripting and underline and strike through. And all of those different options are here in the character panel. In the paragraph panel is our alignment options and some other paragraph indentation op options as well as hyphenate. Now both of these panels generally have a little toggle over here, like a hamburger menu, and we have some more options that we can look at in those menus depending on which one that you're on. So for instance, the character menu, I can select any of these options and I can even reset the character menu. Now those windows and any other window are up here in the window drop down. If you go find character, it's right here. You can pull open that panel and same with paragraph right here. You can pull open that panel. Okay, so that is pretty much everywhere where you can see your text edits, but there's one more super important way to add text here. If we click the move tool, kind of bring this text over, we're gonna add a text box. To add a text box, press T for that type tool. Instead of clicking on our canvas, we're going to click and drag. So this is creating our text box. Once we let go, we've got all our text in there. Now the problem here, with all of my settings, we have a jumbled mess. So let's clean that up a little bit. If I start in the character panel, I can first scale my type down. Then I can take a look at my letting or my line spacing, and I can actually drop this arrow down and click auto. So that's gonna auto space based on the font. From there, I could make my own custom adjustments, but I like how that put that in here. Now, when you click and drag to make a text box, it does put in sample text, which is fine. Kind of helps you see what that's going to look like. Now, in the paragraph options, we can justify this text now because it actually has a text box to tell it how to justify. So it's going to run uh, the text from one side to the other. With smaller types, you won't get these big gaps. But we can also just justify left or right or center, of course. And this is where some of the paragraph indentation options come in, as well as any spacing after. Because now we have a text box to tell it what to do with the text. This over here is called point type. And this type will just keep typing on and on and on. Whereas anything within a text box will hit the edge of the text box and wrap. So this is how you can wrap your type. Now there is a type dropdown. If we go up to our dropdown area, we see type. So a lot of different options here. So you can quickly get to your type panels like character and paragraph and even glyphs. So if you wanted to add in like a symbol or an icon, there's a whole glyphs panel for that. Once again, the anti-aliasing, we can adjust that. We have orientation. We have some other options here that I never get into. We can also rasterize our type layers. So type layers are vector layers that include the font, but if you know someone does not have the font, you could bake the type into the document by rasterizing it. You cannot go back from that though, so the text will no longer be editable. That's a destructive editing feature, but it is something that you can do from time to time if you need to do that, or you wanna work with the pixels of the letters to kind of change them a little bit. Now, if we have this text box selected out here without having the type tool or any text highlighted, just the text box selected in our layer, we can actually convert this back and forth between point type and area type, which is your text box. So if you wanted a certain text to be a text box, you can convert it to a text box. Or if I wanna take this text box and convert it to point type or point text, I can do that too. We can hit OK. And now, basically that was saying some of the text extended beyond the text box and it was gonna delete anything that we weren't actually seeing, which is fine in this case. But now this type is point type, which means there's no text box associated with it. So these are all paragraph breaks now that we had to put in there automatically. The same thing goes for 
let's say this type again, if we have it selected and go up to type, we can convert it back to paragraph text. So now we have our text box again. You can see that by the dotted lines that go around when you click on your text. So you can go back and forth between point type, which just types forever in a horizontal line until you enter or press enter and you know do like a paragraph break. Or you can convert it to area type, which is having a text box out here. So this tutorial was kind of long, but that is everything about how to add text here in Photoshop.